Hello, I'm here to talk to you about censorship. Now, censorship is the impairment of a person's freedom of speech in any form, whether it's social media, videos on YouTube, news articles, uh, books, entertainment, or talking to another person. These can all theoretically be restricted through censorship, and they all have been restricted by many different countries and many different organizations in many different ways. Now, the first type of censorship is outright blocking, banning, forbidding, burning the information, destroying it, making it as if the information never existed in the first place. This is one form of censorship, and it has been used throughout history in many cases, especially by religious institutions, and has been even been used by Nazis and many different organizations in an attempt to control information. Right. The second form is blacklist slash whitelisting. This is an institution that creates a system of recommendations to approve or disapprove of something by a certain criteria that they deem defines good or bad. And many institutions or organizations can take the information from this blacklist and follow it if they want to or not. And but the blacklist generally have influences on various organizations. So a blacklist for non-Christian books and things like that. There's all kinds of cases like that. Uh, the third is restricting material to audience but not banning the material itself. So this is a state when they don't think the material itself is bad but merely who possesses it or has access to it should be restricted. These are things like medical records, uh, age-restricted material. These are things like books that uh, contain classified documents or journals from uh, soldiers and all kinds of characteristics like that to have been restricted. So corporate documents, you name it. Anything that is not generally part of the public record and is restricted to select audiences by criteria. There are many reasons why people censor stuff. One is they want to censor the content, the information in the item itself. So the mere object information uninterpreted. This is things like how to break the law, pick the law, uh, not how to pick the law, how to uh, pick the law, how to break down a door, how to steal a car, uh, how to fight, how to not zone on conscience, how to build a bomb. Uh, many characteristics. This is generally used to restrict nonfiction books. Um, there's lots of examples. The second is by subjective information. These are things like moral beliefs, philosophical beliefs, both implied and directed at the audience. Implied means the information is suggested to the audience, but not necessarily directed at them in an educated manner, like lecturing them. So these are things like uh, Lord of the Flies or, and things like that. Books that uh, have a moral precedence like uh, Hunger Games, um, Divergent, and Jennifer's Government. Books that, challenge, uh, that present philosophical models of the world. Um, and uh, direct information is in books like Mein Kampf, written by Hitler, to, 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 which simply means his struggle. It's basically uh, the Nazis' lead book. Books that teach people about how being a pedophile is not a problem and how to do it. Uh, but there's also books out there that have been restricted by this criteria that are religious. But even the Bible has actually been that is restriction by uh, Hamtan, I believe, has actually banned the Bible based off its in uh, this uh, philosophical beliefs. The third, the fourth, uh, yeah, the third reason is influence. The, they want to ban the thing because of the influence it has on the readers. And they want, don't want it to influence the readers in certain ways. So, like, they don't want to teach children certain things. 
They don't want people to know about certain things because it'll make them start of rebelling or a riot. They, they don't want, uh, they just simply believe the information will influence society in some manner. And the information could theoretically have been good or bad because this censorship is used both for good and bad things. Uh, the fourth is acceptance tolerance implications. This is the ideology that if they do not restrict something, they're implying acceptance or tolerance for it. There are many people who believe that that's a bad thing. And there are many people who want to restrict things by that premise, especially religious institutions. Now, at the end, is censorship good or bad? Well, the truth is censorship is power. Whoever possesses the control of censorship has unlimited power. And the truth is people should have built-in censorship filters to protect themselves. They should learn how to read information about being able to, like, be able to control how it affects them. There are definitely cases where some censorship is necessary, but the truth is, you're never going to be able to truly censor everything. And the truth is, just because you don't censor it doesn't mean society is actually accepting it. Uh, so, the truth of the matter is, censorship when abused gives the people who have it unlimited power. So the question is, should we have censorship to protect the greater good? But the truth is, what is the greater good is decided by the person in control of the censorship. So who would you trust to censor the information you know? And that's the question you should be asking yourself before you decide censorship is good or bad.